This week, people are suffering and dying. So y'all better pay attention, get involved, and fight for basic human rights. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape. Live on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 18th of June, 2021. As you all probably know by now, this weekend is Father's Day. Well, except for Austria and Belgium, well, it was last weekend. And for Lithuania and Switzerland, I know, it was the weekend before that. And for those of you in Germany, I know, I know, it was last month. But here in the United States and 90 other countries, it's this weekend. So with that in mind, I'm going to honor fatherhood, focus on paternal bonds, and I'm dedicating this week's news to the influence of fathers in society. Why am I so focused on fatherhood when this is a vaping news science and advocacy report? Because the lives of our children depend on it. You see, Newton's third law of motion dictates that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And we're not just talking about mathematics or physics here. This law applies to everything in life. So use that lens as I announce Health Canada will soon be enforcing a nicotine cap of 20 milligrams per milliliter starting on July 23rd. From a father's perspective, I can see how government is trying to delicately recalibrate the equilibrium between harm reduction and youth misuse of nicotine. But as a father of a son who smoked or a father of a son who could easily start smoking, Newton's third law of motion has me petrified. What if my kids move to Canada and my son takes up smoking or my other son goes back to smoking? How are these boys going to be able to quit their deadly combustible tobacco habit if they don't have access to high strength nicotine alternatives? Will they be able to quit smoking using only products that are less than 20 milligrams per milliliter? Well, unfortunately, they don't have a choice in Canada anymore. Because politicians made it illegal for Juul, Views, Puff Bar, and any other manufacturer to produce a harm reduction product with 25 or 30 or 50 milligrams of nicotine. Regardless of what you think of these manufacturers, the science proves that these devices are genius level harm reduction products. Personally, I needed a sub ohm higher temperature, higher vapor yield device to quit smoking. But for countless people, a potentially safer option used to be a high nicotine content, low temperature, low vapor volume device. And one day, science may prove that these devices could be 10 or perhaps even 100 times safer than the products that I prefer to use. Well, now, the Achilles heel has been severed on all of these products, and they can only be sold with 20 milligrams per milliliter or less of nicotine in them. And as a vapor who understands how this technology works, I know Canada has just relegated some of the 40,000 smoking related deaths per year into a certain loss of life because a percentage of those smokers won't be able to transition away from their combustible tobacco habit with insufficient nicotine. This is both depressing and infuriating. Almost as much as seeing the viral videos of Ocean City Police tasing and assaulting multiple teenagers this past week for vaping. Yep, you heard that right. Multiple kids were tased, hogtied, and carried away like slaughtered livestock for using a safer harm reduction product. Think about that for a second before I show you the violent enforcement of existing laws. The disproportionate behavior of law enforcement officers on someone's child. And I'm not even going to bring up the fact that the arrested kids were black teenagers who chose not to smoke like their parents probably do. Why is it when police assault citizens, it's considered appropriate use of force? But when citizens protest to a teenager 
being assaulted by an adult authority figure, they get arrested and criminally charged with assault. Where's the justice here? And before we continue any further, I need you to leave your staunch conservative idealism at the door. And for a moment, just a moment, put on your compassionate parental hat as we see the police officers repeatedly enforce their traumatic brutality on this child. How can this aggression be considered justifiable? How can trained authority figures stand idle while a child is pinned down by two grown adults and another adult repeatedly inflicts pain and injuries on a child? This is someone's kid. I don't care if that kid was 16, 17, 18, 19, or whatever age, it's still someone's kid. If it were my kid, and my kid was being kneed repeatedly by anyone, I would have tackled the asshole inflicting brutality on my child. I don't care if it was a hundred assholes surrounding the incident. I would have found a way to save my kid from being assaulted. Well, that's exactly what some bystanders tried to do. They tried to stop the outrageous behavior. And do you know what happened to them for trying to do the right thing? They got surrounded and arrested and carted off to jail for doing the right thing. Ages of adulthood and legality are just imaginary lines in the sand drawn by bureaucrats who refuse to understand that their lines in the sand always have unintended consequences on society. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And when people are forced with violence, Additional violence will always result. It's the reason violence begets violence. In my opinion, the Ocean City Police Department should feel lucky that they didn't have this incident turn into a mass riot and that no lives were lost because this one officer obviously has intermittent explosive disorder. Maybe instead of having hundreds of police officers patrolling the boardwalk looking for somebody who might be vaping. The Ocean City Police Department would be better served by swapping a few of these officers for a clinical psychiatrist who could go around and evaluate the mental stability of their entire workforce and do it on a regular basis, no less. Let's move on. Psychology Today published another article on teen vaping. And care to guess why? Because, see, these psychologists know, regardless of what the laws on the book say, some people are just predisposed to seek risky behavior. They know that many adolescents experiment, and there is no law on earth that is going to stop this or any of their other behaviors. There will always be a segment of society that chooses to cope with life by using drugs, and instead of vilifying the drug, or vilifying the child, maybe we should focus on the root issues that lead to substance use and substance misuse. So what is Psychology Today's bottom line on vaping? Well, they say that vaping may be a useful tool for adult tobacco smokers who are seeking a less harmful alternative. Yet, adolescents and non-smokers should not begin vaping. Well, of course not. You know what else they said? They say that if you have a teenager who has started vaping, that there might be underlying issues that cause them to pick up a vape. They might have issues like low self-esteem or depression or anxiety, which led them to experiment with THC or nicotine or who knows what else. Or it could simply be a teenager who is trying to fit in with the social circle of kids that are all dealing with growing up. The only way for you as a parent to deal with it, if you find your kid vaping, is to have a real conversation with your kids. Don't talk down to them, but have a real, meaningful conversation where the kids are an equal part of the discussion, 
that it's a truly a two-way street. And find out what's going on with your kid. Moving on. Moving on to 6PR882 Talk for their discussion on the posh Perth private school banning vaping amid rising adolescent use. Yeah. The war on drugs continues as incompetent Dr. Alex O'Connell institutes draconian control on Scotch college kids in Western Australia. Because, see, he thinks that if a kid brings a vape to school, well, then that child needs to be labeled a drug dealer. Like, that's really supposed to help the situation. Let me ask you a question, okay? Does micromanaging children ever result in a positive outcome? I mean, really, does this guy even have any kids of his own? And here he is, the administrator of a college in Western Australia, psychologically traumatizing children by labeling teenagers as drug dealers, even if the vape has no drugs in them. Get that? Even if the vape has no drugs in them, they're still gonna get labeled as a drug dealer. Does this guy really think that if he calls kids drug dealers, that they're going to change their behavior in a positive manner? Rebellious behavior begs for opportunities to become a celebrity. Do these people not understand fundamental psychology? Violence begets violence, and draconian laws are simply opportunities for rebellious behavior. Why don't you quit being a greedy bastard? and spend some money on nurturing positive behavior instead of vilifying children for making bad choices. Don't you know that if you can attract more bees with honey than you can vinegar? Moving on. Moving on to Cambria County, Pennsylvania, where three school districts won't hire any additional teachers or hire a school psychologist, but they have no problem spending grant money on vape detectors. Yeah, we covered this one before. If you install vape detectors in bathrooms, guess where the kids aren't going to be vaping anymore? But is that actually going to stop the kids from vaping? Seriously? If, if, you, if you put up the detectors in the bathrooms and the kids know that they're in there, they're not going to go into the bathroom to use them. So they'll simply find another place to go. And if you literally install detectors in every single room in the school, you know what the kids are going to go do? If they really want to go and do it, they're going to go outside. They'll leave school. Or they just won't go to school. If the school's locked down and there's only one entrance to get in and out and it's monitored, well, they just won't go into the school in the morning. And they'll just hang out. What's that going to do to your truancy numbers? Did you help the situation at all? Maybe you need to find out what's going on with these kids and deal with that problem instead of dealing with the symptom of their problem. Getting back to Cambria County School Districts, you know that this, this was all being done because of a grant that they got. This is the Drug and Alcohol Program Grant for Cambria County. And it's obviously only there for one reason. You know what the reason is? It's to make more money for the businesses who supply technology solutions to teenage behavior problems. Kind of like how the World Health Organization's solution to smoking cessation is an automated tech service repeatedly telling the smokers to quit or let them face an additional vilifying text belittling them for not being able to stop using willpower. So here's another text reminding you that you're a schmuck addicted to combustible cigarettes. You know what that would make me do if I was using this message to quit smoking? Every time I got a text, I'd light up another cigarette. So this is the dumbest fucking thing I ever heard in my entire life. A text message is supposed to stop you from smoking? That's, that's going to give you the willpower to quit. 
these people have no idea what it means to be addicted to combustible tobacco. None whatsoever. And you know, speaking of the World Health Organization, have you seen their latest tobacco product regulation report that they put out? I mean, it's a total disaster. Well, fortunately, Nancy Lucas, the executive coordinator of CAFRA, is calling out the World Health Organization report for not providing credible guidance based on science and evidence. Risk proportionate regulation can only take place if and when lawmakers understand the fundamental science which proves harm reduction only benefits society. It only produces a benefit to society. Smoking kills half of its users. Harm reduction products are a safer alternative and have less than a 5% chance of causing any harm. That's not what her letter said. Her letter said 10% of causing any harm. But we all know the Royal College of Physicians stances on this. It's 5%. And we all know the Cancer Research UK says that it's only half a percent chance of cancer risk compared to smoking. But the fact remains, smoking kills 8 million people every year. And quit or die doesn't work, has never worked. And it relegates the masses of society into a mass grave at a rate of one person every five seconds. Oops, there goes another smoker. Just died from smoking because he didn't know about the potential of a harm reduction product. Quit or die does not work. Governments around the globe must adopt harm reduction policies immediately or face the fact that they're complicit in all of these deaths. Shit, we just lost another human being from smoking. 20,000 people die every day from a lack of world leadership advocating for harm reduction alternatives. I mean, I don't understand this. If governments trust the science on COVID, why aren't they trusting the science on harm reduction? Oh, man. Another kid just lost their smoking parent because they didn't know vaping is safer than smoking. Well, it's time to get the word out. It's time to become an advocate. Voices for Vape definitely needs your help to get the word out. So since it's the highlighted advocacy group for the week, now it's time for ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here's the first story of this week. Canada has imposed a nicotine cap, 20 milligrams per milliliter. They call it progress. They say that they're trying to recalibrate the delicate equilibrium between harm reduction for adults and use prevention for youth. But this is this really going to change the behavior of the kids? I mean, yeah, it's going to make it harder for them to try and misuse the nicotine because they literally cut it into a third of what they could get before. I get it. I understand where they're coming from. I understand why their mentality is to say, well, if we don't have the extremely high levels of nicotine because people like me that were smoking two and a half packs a day can quit using six milligram, then we don't need 30, 40, 50 milligram nicotine. But there are people out there that that's the only reason they were able to quit. They picked up a 50 milligram jewel and it worked. It's why it became the most popular thing for people to buy. It was cheap and easy. There were no instructions. There were no batteries to mess with. You bought the thing and you used it. You used it just like you did a cigarette. It's why it works. I know I vilified Jewel at the beginning when they, all this news came out about kids misusing the thing, but that's not the solution. Vilifying the product, vilifying the kids. That's not the solution. That's not what happened. That's not why there's a problem out here. Kids are going to do what kids are going to do. 
I've already accepted that a long time ago. You probably sick of hearing me say it. Kids are going to do what kids are going to do. Can't blame Jewel for it. I know you'd like to. Everybody always loves to point a finger and transfer the blame to somebody else. Forget about taking responsibility as a parent, as a father or a mother for the actions of your child. And I don't care how much time you spend with kids or how dedicated you are to being a good parent. Hovering over them isn't healthy for them either. Watching everything that they do and giving them no sense of privacy, that's not the solution either. You gotta find a happy balance. And that's what they're trying to do here. I don't like it. Well, now that Canada imposed this, we can start collecting the data and see. Is it going to stop the kids from misusing it? Or are they just going to go do something else? You know what the answer is. If kids want to get high, they're going to find a way to get high. Making something illegal hasn't stopped it from being available. Yeah, we've cut down on the, how much of it is available. But how many other problems have we introduced into society because we make things illegal? How's the war on drugs going? My whole life I've been hearing about this war on drugs. We're going down here. We're going to be down in South America. We're going to burn the whole field of crops because that'll stop the problem. No. It didn't stop the problem. You can't institute your will on somebody and expect it to miraculously stop them from wanting to do what they were going to do. They'll just find a different way to do it. Well, health officials and government authorities, they don't really care. If they did, they might take a step back, regroup, rethink this whole situation and say, well, maybe we should just legalize everything. That way we don't have these people overdosing and dying because in order for them to actually use it, they'd have to go to a facility where it was safe to use it and they would be getting things that are real, not tainted with who knows what car fentanyl fentanyl. How many people need to die before things change in society? Well, I'm going to get back to the topic here because I know that's not why you're here watching. But here in Health Health Canada is going to be enforcing this 20 milligram per milliliter cap. Vape shops that have their stuff, most of them can't afford to just toss it. So they're going to sell it until they run out. And then they're not going to be able to carry it anymore. We'll see what happens. Let's move on. Because this thing pissed me off to no end. And I've already shown you the video. I don't need to go over it again and again. There's a link in the description below if you want to actually look at the link and watch the video yourself. But this made every single newspaper across the country. The link in the description is going to be from the Baltimore Sun. Yep. And there's also going to be a link to the actual tweets where this got published. Look at that. There's three of them on a teenager. Two of them are holding him down. There's a third one there by his head. So there's actually four of them surrounding this kid. Look at that. Look at him kneeing this kid. What purpose does that serve other than to infuriate everybody around them? Hmm? How many times? How many times? Seriously? There's no way that this could ever be considered justifiable by anybody that has any sense of compassion. That's somebody's kid there. And he wasn't the only one. 
Have you seen this one yet? This kid? You can clearly see he had his hands up. He's had multiple officers all talking to him at the same time. And you can see he looked at somebody else because somebody else said, take off your backpack. So he did exactly that. He went to take off his backpack. But he was already tased by this point. I'm not going to harp on it. You all, you, all, you all already know what I think of the situation. Utterly ridiculous. Well... Here we have article in Reason Mag, police abuse. Don't be surprised when stupid laws are maintained with force. The campaign for tobacco-free kids rallied against cops for enforcing the same kind of anti-vaping rule that they helped pass. They were the ones advocating to make it illegal. Did you not know that it wasn't going to change anything? Are you that ignorant to reality? To not realize just because you make something illegal isn't going to stop people from doing it. Not one bit. Has it worked with any of the other drugs that are out there? Did it stop people from using it? Huh? Marijuana? Cocaine? Molly's? THC? Any of this stuff. Has the war on drugs ever succeeded? Anywhere? I'll leave a link in the description below. This stuff infuriates me to no end, and I can't be objective about it. I'm sorry. I know that you would like to go to a news report and see somebody that's objectively talking about the situation, but I just can't do it. My entire life, I've watched people vilified for doing things that weren't right. But the only reason they weren't right is because there's a law saying that it isn't. When you stand back and objectively look at it, they're doing it for different reasons, psychological reasons. They were traumatized or abused when they were younger or they had a life altering event. PTSD for the military people out there is a real phenomenon. Why can't people understand that you don't have to be in the military to experience a traumatic event in your life that permanently alters you for the rest of your life? Well, Psychology Today published another article, New Findings on Teens and Vaping. You know what I found out? When they don't have access to it, they did other stuff. So once again, here we go. Another article saying, what is vaping? Where did it come from? Why is it here? It ultimately boils down to the fact that... Um, once Pandora's box is open, it's going to take a life of its own. And there isn't anything anybody can do to control it. So, being that this is Father's Day weekend, that's what's going to rein me back in to stay on topic here. Because I'm here talking to you as a parent. If you have a child and your child is vaping, well, you need to go talk to them and find out what motivated them to vape. Don't chastise them. Don't vilify them. Accept the fact of the situation being what it is. Find out how you got to that situation. And then you need to be reasonable and understanding for what your child is doing. And this doesn't just apply to vaping. This applies to everything. As a parent, you have an obligation to bring your child up in a healthy, nurturing, loving environment. And belittling them is not going to solve the problem. 
to have a conversation with your child on a regular basis. Find out what's going on in their life. Find out what they're dealing with. Offer your help and be respectful if they choose not to use you. the help that you offer. Because they are a human being growing up, learning how to cope with life. And there are some things that they're just going to be embarrassed to talk to you about. That's why it helps when you have both a mom and a dad. Because if you can't talk to one, you can usually talk to the other one. But there's always going to be some things in life that kids aren't going to want to talk to their parents about. They might need an uncle or a friend to get through it. And it's a part of life. Regardless of how old you are. We all need people to talk to. We all, all need people to care about us. So, on this Father's Day weekend, reach out. Reach out to your kids. Reach out to your parents. Reach out to people that you know have kids. And wish them a happy Father's Day. Moving on. Because here we have, in Western Australia... Perth South College, Scotch College. This guy has no clue. Perth private school bans vaping amid rise in e-cigarette use. Why do you need to ban something that's already illegal for a child to have? There's already laws on the book saying if you're under 18, you're not allowed to have a nicotine-containing vape. You need a prescription from a doctor and jump through 15,000 hoops if you're an adult, wants to quit smoking. But there are products over there and everywhere around the globe that do not contain nicotine. And they have a problem with it because they think that it's going to lead to them using the nicotine. Listen, when I was a kid and I was offered a cigarette, I said, no, thank you. I never got to be put into the situation where I was surrounded by everybody that was doing it. And didn't have a choice but to say, fit in with the group or find a different group. But that's not what happens to everybody else out there. And kids are going to do what they need to to try and fit in. It's a natural human instinct. Well, this principal has no clue. And he thinks that it's going to be good for him to vilify the children that choose to bring in a vape, even if it has no nicotine in it. Zero milligram. He's going to be vilified and labeled a drug dealer and face the consequences of being a drug dealer for using a vape, even if it has no nicotine in it. Tell me how ridiculous that sounds. He says it's simple. If you bring apparatuses or bring the materials onto the college grounds, in my view, you're choosing to be a part of the community at risk. What risk? What risk is there from vaping zero milligram? Can you please tell me that? Can you please tell me if you have a school dance do they use fog machines there at your school dance? Because you are literally breathing in the exact same thing that comes out of a device with zero milligram. Or maybe you're too ignorant to know that. The liquid that goes into a fog machine is the exact same liquid that goes into a vape with zero milligram. The only additional ingredient is flavor couple drops of flavor. How is that going to hurt anybody? Are you really that stupid? Obviously, because you did a nice little interview here. And if you want to listen to it, it's only 12 minutes long. Talking about it like he really cares and like he's trying to be objective about it. More like he's just uninformed. And somebody needs to have a conversation with them and say, you know, there's really no difference between this and that. You wouldn't have a problem with them doing that, so why do you have a problem with them doing this? 
Oh, because you think it might lead him to smoke. Listen, if he's going to smoke, he's going to smoke anyway. It has nothing to do with that. But that's neither here nor there, because here in Cambria County, Pennsylvania, the three school districts are moving forward because of their funding from Cambria County Drug and Alcohol Program. Well, now they're going to install vape detectors as part of the program's Environmental Strategies Reimbursement Project. So now you're saying that there's an environmental problem with vaping, but you don't have a problem with all those people lighting tobacco on fire. There really isn't even tobacco. It's a bunch of chemicals sprayed on paper that's shredded to look like tobacco, but it really isn't tobacco. Only like 16% of a cigarette is actually tobacco. You don't have a problem with that environmental cost, but you have a problem with aerosolized vegetable glycerin. Seriously, vaping is not smoking. And if you go and install the system, congratulations. You'll feel good about yourself, but you'll have accomplished nothing except force kids to go do it elsewhere where there isn't one of these detectors. And I know you can't afford to put it in the entire school, in every hallway, in every room, So they'll just find a different place to hang out and do it. Behind the bleachers? How many of you growing up remember seeing kids hanging out behind the bleachers? Smoking. Kids are going to do what kids are going to do. Moving on. All right, this next story comes from the Manila Standard in the Philippines. Experts warn Asia-Pacific leaders on World Health Organization's baseless vaping rules. Once again, Bloomberg got his way, spent a little bit of money, bribed these officials, bribed those officials, did his little, you know, hula dance with the right people and got the World Health Organization to ignore science and implement his draconian prohibitionist mentality. And thank God we have organizations like CAFRA that stand up and say, listen, What you are doing is wrong. What happened to science dictating what happens in society? Science proves what's better for public health. Prohibition doesn't work. Harm reduction, easily adoptable by people, improves outcomes on society. Regardless of whether it's 1% safer or 95% safer or 99% safer, it's harm reduction. But World Health Organization ignores harm reduction and favors prohibition. So fortunately, CAFRA has stood up and says, enough is enough. You need to do what's right. Vaping has been critical in helping smoking adults move away from a product that has a 50-50 chance of killing them to a safer alternative that has less than a 10% chance of causing harm. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter whether you tell them 10%, 5%, 1%. If it's 1%, it's still better for people and better for society, but they ignore it. It's all or nothing. And if you take a look at the American Heart Association, The American Lung Association, they all do the same thing. It's all or nothing. Because if they don't get everything, then they'll say, we don't want it. And why don't they want it? Oh, it's because it gives them something to keep doing. What happened? What would happen if they got everything that they wanted and they banned it all together? Besides creating a big black market making it impossible for you and me to keep on doing it. I mean, I got enough stocked up that I'm not worried about it, but seriously, what's going to happen? What are they going to focus on next? Do you know, leave a comment in the description. I'd love to hear it. Moving on this week's highlight advocacy organization is voices for vape.org. And Nancy Lucas 
is a passionate harm reduction, tobacco harm reduction advocate who co-founded the Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy Organization New Zealand back in 2015. To legitimately fight for the right to vape and to have a choice available for all smokers to quit using a safer harm reduction product. She is also the executive coordinator for CAFRA, where she applies her experience in the THR advocacy to guide and mentor consumer advocates throughout the Asia Pacific region and beyond. If you live in Australia, you fall under CAFRA. So if you're watching over there, I need you to do this. One simple thing, okay? If you have a Twitter account, go to Voices for Vape, twitter.com slash Voices for Vape, and click the follow button, okay? As an organization on Twitter, she only has 266 followers. That's, that's, a, I, I don't, that's ridiculous. That's less followers than I have on YouTube. And she represents, helps represent all of the Asia Pacific region. I understand a lot of the countries over there don't speak English as their native language. But what's your excuse? Click the follow button. I don't care if you tweet or post them or anything. Give them a little bit of support. So they have a little bit of credibility when they go to talk and negotiate and influence people. If you walked up with no followers anywhere to talk to your representative in government, regardless of where it's at, do you think that politician is going to give you any credence whatsoever if you don't have any ties or followers? Nobody gives a shit. Take two minutes of your time. Click follow. It's that simple. Piece of cake. And, and if you won't do it for me, do it for her. Okay? Here, I'm going to introduce you to her. Ready? For those who don't know me, my name is Nancy Lucas and I am the executive coordinator of CAFRA. I've been a consumer advocate in the tobacco harm reduction space for at least five years now and I am one of the co-founders and directors of AVCA in New Zealand. As with the majority of the consumer advocates in this space, I am a former smoker. I smoked for well over 30 years. I've been vaping now for about a decade and I made the switch for my health and my finances, but more importantly for my children. I didn't want them to experience what my brother and I experienced with our own mother. My mom smoked for close to half a century and her smoking killed her at the age of 58. I wanted to be there for my kids. I wanted to be there for my grandchildren. If you speak to any of the consumer advocates, they will tell you probably a similar story, be it a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, an aunt, or an uncle. This work is a labor of love, and this is why we do what we do. We have. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You've now been introduced to Nancy Lucas, a very passionate tobacco harm reduction advocate who co founded the Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy in New Zealand back in 2015 to fight for the right to vape. Fighting for the right for harm reduction products to be available for any smoker who chooses to use it to quit smoking. I mean, you would think you wouldn't have to fight for harm reduction. You would think that science and simple logic is all that would be required for us to be able to continue vaping. But that's not the case. Bloomberg spending his money and there's countless other people out there simply because of ignorance who are fighting against harm reduction products. You know, Albert Einstein was credited for the definition of insanity. And the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and over and over again and expecting different results. So I'm going to dismiss the fact that that's not really what he was talking about. I'm going to bring to attention of all of you people watching right now that what he was actually discussing was that human endeavor is described as an attempt to replace ignorance with knowledge. 
that human beings are always trying to find new solutions and new ways of doing things. And in this tobacco harm reduction advocacy fight, I'm going to try and do something a little bit different than everybody else has done. I came across so many stories. It's my vape story. That's what started this channel. My vape story is something that countless people have done. And it's simply telling your story, telling people how you were trapped in the cycle of addiction with cigarette smoking, trapped in the cycle of addiction with tobacco until you found a harm reduction product that we call vaping. So what am I going to be doing now? I'm going to be trying to gather up as many of these stories as I possibly can. First-hand experiences, first-hand stories of all you vapors out there. And I know Casa is looking for testimonials too, but I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to put together all of your stories. That's my new project. I'm going to put together all of your stories about how you started smoking, of how you tried to quit smoking. You tried the patches, you tried the gums, you tried the lozenges and how once you found this, you were able to quit smoking something you thought you would never, ever be able to do. That's my current project right now. I'm going around and I'm finding everybody's story and I'm going to bring it out there and I'm going to keep bringing it out there and I'm going to keep pushing for this until we get these people to listen to us, to understand how important this is to saving people's lives. It's all it takes. One flavorful vape. And there is no desire for a cigarette anymore. For some people, it's a battle. It's a commitment that you have to make to this. For other people, they literally stop at a gas station, make the conscious choice one day to pick up a vape instead of a pack of cigarettes. And once they try it and they enjoy the flavor and they get the nicotine fix that they needed, they're done smoking. So that's my project. If you know somebody that has recorded a vape story, send me an email, djalex at hunkyvape.com. Or if you have the time, take your phone and record your vape story and send it to me, djalex at hunkyvape.com. Or upload it to YouTube and send me the link to the video. That's my goal. I'm going to do it differently. I know other people have done something similar to this before, but I watched the stories of 30 people yesterday while I was in here working in my office, trying to organize things. I watched and listened to the story of 30 people who are still alive today because of vaping. They don't have lung cancer. They don't have COPD or emphysema, or if they did, it's gotten better because they switched to vaping. So if you could give me a couple minutes of your time, record your story and send it to me. I'd like to include it in my video. All right. That wraps up the uh, vaping news, science and advocacy for the uh, 18th of June, 2021. It's father's day weekend. I got one video I'm going to be finishing up, but I plan on spending my Father's Day with my kids, and I'm going to call my mother and tell her how much I appreciate her. And if you could do the same, you'd really make somebody's day. So that wraps it up for today. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And remember, all you need to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes is peace, love, and a hunky vape. Have a great day.